and I'm sports director Adam Lucas standing next to Jesse Merrick here for day six of the Juco World Series and you wouldn't really be able to tell it except for that little <laughs> puddle just by where first base would have been but about 30 minutes ago we just got nailed by some rain uh, it kind of came out of nowhere and that's uh, that led to a rain delay out here uh, and it really did seem like it just kind of came out of nowhere yeah, yeah it really did it just came out of nowhere it was rain mixed with some big time hail the most I've seen since I'm since I've been living out here in Colorado it was amazing <laughs> so that we were in the middle of the late game here and it was a potential playing game to the championship if Northwest Florida State won but we only made it through six innings and then the rain came now we're in a rain delay and it's going to be uh, postponed until tomorrow so this game will pick back up where we left off tomorrow at noon but first of all let's back up a little bit to the start of uh, or, or rather in between games and talk about Northwest Florida State and their pitching we knew that it was going to be good they were one of the top five teams in ERA heading into this and through their first four games in the Juca World Series they had posted a sub two ERA yeah. Uh, so we expected to see something good out of them tonight, probably. We definitely did, yeah. We expected a big game from the pitching staff, but it was funny. We actually mic'd up Coach uh, Doug Martin before the game, and he was also prepping his starting pitcher and maybe a pitcher for the future. Check it out. What's up, dude? Where you been, man? Uh, baseball practice. How'd it go? Good. You getting ready for the tournament? Yeah. Kimbrel. Good. Kershaw. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, spinner. David Price. Boy, Lance to come. Uh, Jordan Walden. Ah! That's why we don't do him. Wild. We know you ain't going to give us nine. We don't expect that. But I'd like to be out there to see you pitching in about that fifth or sixth. If you've done that, then you've done your job. Well, ain't nobody said you can't. All right, you, you can prove me wrong. You want to do that? You like proving me wrong? Oh, then yeah. prove me wrong. Right. Love it. Go do it then. And we started off our second game of the day with Challenger Baseball singing us Take Me Out to the Ball Game. That's a Juco staple right there. And look who's back in the lineup for Northwest Florida State. Tanner Halstead, who was hit in the face with a ball on Tuesday night. And there's a familiar face. Jack Finnegan begin again. And the McLennan Highlanders. And it's do or die for McLennan. And Finnegan gave the Highlanders a gem in his first start on Saturday. He follows that up with more of the same. And that breaking ball is just disgusting. Finnegan racking up K after K and offense was at a premium a little bit of a showdown between starting pitchers but James Rudkin put some distance between McLennan and Florida in the top of the fifth with this RBI single putting his team up 3-1. And so McLennan would tack on one more run there before we got hit with the rain. And so, again, that's where we stand now in the sixth inning with McLennan holding a 4-1 lead. And that's where we'll pick up again tomorrow at noon. And uh, I guess that takes us to the first game of the day. Now, that was an elimination game between Chattahoochee Valley out of Alabama and Walter State out of Tennessee, two teams that have put up a lot of runs on the board. Yeah, exactly, especially that Walter State team. I mean, the home runs left and right every time we see them out on the field. It's amazing. And the Chattahoochee Valley team we, we talked about just runs through walls for their coach. Well, one thing that we've seen out of Walters is three, four, and five in their lineup. I believe it's uh, Osuna, Grosvenor, and then Jared Hood. Yes. Those three guys can smack the ball, and they weigh probably a combined 600 pounds, and At it's least. pure muscle. <laughs> So uh, those guys, we, we expected to see a slugfest, and uh, they didn't disappoint. Here are those highlights. Chattahoochee Valley, Walter State, win or go home in game 16 of the Junior College World Series. And after a scoreless top of the first, the tournament leader in RBIs, Ramon Asuna, tallies the first one of the day for the Senators. After the seeing eye single plates, Kyle Wilson from third, but Asuna is just the appetizer that is the meat of that lineup. As the big man, Ross Grosvenor, two hops the wall for an RBI double, giving the Senators a 2-0 lead. But the Chat Valley Pirates have some power as well with the bases loaded. In the top of the second, Tanner Davis punches one of the warning track for the bases clearing triple. And just like that, the Pirates are back in front. We'll jump out to the bottom of the fourth now. Senators trail 5-4, but it's Asuna back at the dish, and you know this kid's going to eat. The two-run blast, the left puts Walters 
Back out in front by a run. But just like we saw in the first, Grosvenor comes to the plate, matching the effort by Asuna. That'll be his third home run of this World Series, pushing it to a 5-7 lead. Ending later, it's the 8-6 lead for Walters, and Kali Curry gets in on the fun, and finally someone under two bills, homers for the Senators. And this three-run blast gives the guys from the Volunteer State a 10-7 lead in the fifth inning. And they'd only need two more to close it out. 14-6, the final in favor of Walters in seven innings. You know what my favorite part is, is the relationships. Okay, you know, relationships with these guys, relationships with y'all, you know, the relationships with the town. You know, you, you fall in love with this place and you, you fall in love with you guys. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's perspective, man. It's perspective, you know. You meet a lot of good friends and you don't want to leave this place, not because you got put out of a tournament. You don't want to leave because of y'all, of them, you know. Uh, Come out tomorrow and whoever we're playing and, and, and give it our all. Um, you know, I, I feel like, you know, gosh, we've won 57 games. You know, we're fighting an uphill battle, whoever it is, trying to win two more. But, you know, I'd like to think this team's got it in them. You know? So with that, Walter State awaits the winner of the game that just got rained out down here, Adam. So, you know, we'll have to see. But uh, Walter State there is going to be waiting on either McLennan or Northwest Florida State. Now, if Northwest Florida State wins, Walter State has to beat them twice, and they're going to bump that championship game to Saturday if they are able to beat them then. But then if they can, uh, if Northwest Florida does not win this game, then it's a playing game. Then Walter State and McLennan will play for a spot in Saturday's championship game. So it looks like we might be headed for Saturday unless Northwest Florida State can come back and win this one and then win tomorrow night at 7 as well. Now also some news in the NFL, some bad news for the Denver Broncos. All pro left tackle Ryan Clady has reportedly torn his ACL. Multiple reports coming out of Denver today mm -hmm. saying that he will likely miss the remainder of the season. And we haven't even gotten started in the season. So he was just doing a, a pass block drill in OT. TAs and it sounds like his knee buckled, so that's a tough loss for Denver. Yeah, it's another offseason casualty. You always hear about these things happening, and, it, and it's really tough to see a guy like Clady go down again. You know, he suffered from that Liz Frank injury as well, so tough to see that happen. Well, folks, keep in mind we'll be right back here for day seven of the Juco World Series. We'll have your highlights of the rest of this game, plus tomorrow night's game, whether it's the championship or not. Plus, we'll get your reaction from coaches and players. So make sure you stay tuned to News Channel 5 for all your Juco coverage. That's all the time we have in sports. Stick around. We'll be right back.